Welcome to another episode of Silence is Golden. I'm Simon Kelly. And he's Simon Kelly. And he's Simon Kelly. Um, <laughs> and today what we'll be talking about is running a discovery workshop for your clients, why it's important and, and how you can actually put that together. We'll also be taking a look at duplicate content. We'll be taking a look at uh, WordCamp San Diego, have some videos that are up on WordPress TV. We'll take a look at one of our favorites. Uh, six best freelancer hacks for meeting project deadlines and some more GDPR news. Stay with us. Welcome back to another episode of Science is Gold, and of course, my name is Troy Dean. This is Simon Kelly, and uh, it's good to be back here again, mate. Two weeks in a row now. What you got in the cup over there? The cup here. This is a, um, a uh, ordinarily would be a coffee, but we're actually this is a special coffee. Yeah. It has a supplement in it. It has a ketone supplement in it. So, th and it's a chocolate sea salt ketone supplement. So this is actually a soy salt mocha keto. There nice. We go. I bet. I bet baristas love you when you come in and, and order that. Well, we just invented it upstairs. Raymond oh, Maloney was very happy when I when I explained it was a soy salted mochaccino. He said that's fantastic. Except the soy milk isn't very keto. Uh, basically, this stops me from eating too much food. Right. Which at my age is kind of an important thing, not just to avoid middle age spread, but also to avoid too much cell regeneration which can lead to um, just an overactive digestive system, which is not good for things like, you know, heart disease, cancer, Alzheimer's, all those kind of bad things, which, um, look, the data is not in, and I'm not a scientist, <laughs> and I don't really know what I'm talking about, uh, but uh, I just know that the less food I eat these days, the better I feel. Really? Yeah. There you go. I've, yeah. um, I've just cut out breakfast and, it, like, yeah. you know, by chance in some ways, yeah. but it feels good. It actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you get, kind of get past the hunger stage and then you're like, oh, I've got energy all of a sudden. That's right. And, and then come lunchtime yep, exactly and you're back, right. you're back on, eat something good and healthy and not all the white carbs you can. Correct. And then you're good for the afternoon. That's right. So I used to have a big bowl of, uh, I used to have a big bowl of muesli and fruit every morning for breakfast. Ray will, will tell you I used to come and eat this big bowl of fruit and muesli for breakfast and wonder why I was asleep at 10.30 in the, in the morning. And it's because your body's working really hard to process all that glucose and all those carbs and you just kind of nod off because all the blood is in your guts um, processing food. So I don't eat breakfast pretty much these days, except on the weekends. I'll go out and have bacon and eggs and avocado. Hashtag no toast. There we go. Nice. There's my hashtag little, no toast. Hashtag no yeah, toast. Right. There's my little keto rant for the morning. But you're not here Gotta to learn about up. keto shit. We're here to talk about WordPress and running a WordPress consulting business. Mm. Yeah. yeah, the other stuff is fun anyway. It is. So there's been a couple of new things that have happened. So let's take a look at what's new. Stop. Stop. So I'm always a big fan of the articles that Yoast come out with, and uh, and this one is definitely not one to disappoint. It's a uh, duplicate content causes and solutions. Uh, duplicate content is when you have content that's either duplicate or very very similar, and it's not favored by Google. So if it, it could be on your own site or it could be from another site. So you want to make sure you've always got unique content. Yoast go into much more um, vivid detail uh, with ways to be able to, to get around that from a technical perspective and from a content perspective. So definitely a good article to, to take a look at. Uh, in other news, WordCamp San Diego videos are up. And one of the videos that I was taking a look at was from Ellen Goodwin. And it's how to be the action hero of your own life. So you can check that out at wordpress.tv. And it's just about like taking control of your own life and just like what would the, what would the hero do, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, she goes into a bit more detail than that uh, and a few examples that are related to, to WordPress people. Um, but it, yeah, it's definitely a good video to, to check out. I don't usually get a chance to catch up on the WordCamp videos because it's like eight hours plus mm. of video content. Mm. It's more like, I definitely prefer to be there. Mm. Yeah. Absolutely. The only, I can cate categorically say the only videos that I've ever watched on WordPress TV from WordCamps are those videos of myself mm. presenting and speaking. Mm -hmm. Same here. Yeah. yeah. So just the one video I've got, yeah. I'll just watch that on repeat. Yeah. I've n I haven't even watched yours. Sorry, <laughs> mate. No, no. Didn't expect nothing less from you. <sighs> So, also, um, there's an article that came out from freelancersunion.org. I and love it was Freelancers Union, by the way. They've got mm -hmm. heaps of great content. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, for freelancers, would mm -hmm. you believe? Yeah. And this one's about six best freelancer hacks for meeting project deadlines. Would you believe that most of these are not about project management itself, and it's more about like your own mindset and when you say yes too much? So, what 
point one, don't overcommit, as in, you know, promise too much and then back yourself into a corner. Minimize distractions so you can stay on track with what you need to do. You need a high level of focus and self-control. Uh, keep prioritized lists. Communicate with the client. I think this is absolutely one of the most important parts is just communication with clients. Build momentum and, uh, and that's it. So it's definitely wor an article worth uh, diving into and seeing what those points are. The, um, just a, a little dovetail there, keep communicating with the client I think is one of the most important um, items in that list and one of the ways that you can do that consistently is to systemize it. So one of the big problems that we see with, with managing client projects is that you start work on a project and then four or five days later the client starts emailing you and says, hey, how's everything going? We have a failure metric in the business that says if a client contacts us to find out how the project is going, we've failed. It's our job to keep in regular contact with our client and let them know how we're going. So typically speaking, if you're working on a project that's gonna take a few weeks, Tuesday and Thursday are good days to check in with a client, send them an email at four o'clock Tuesday and Thursday and say, hey, this is what we've done, this is what we're gonna do over the next few days, everything is moving along nicely. And that really, really is enough of a touch point just to keep them happy mm. so that they don't come looking for you and, and come looking for an update. Yeah, definitely. So what we do is we send an update on Fridays, so every Friday with what we've worked on and what's up next. And then if w this is a particular type of project, we'll have a, a call scheduled in on Tuesdays. And that works pretty well for us. Mm -hmm. So not, not a lot of extra effort, but if we, syst if we systemize this and we're not waiting for the client to get in touch with us, that, um, that works really nicely. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, hey, just a quick shout out to a couple of people watching on Facebook. Brett Drinkwater is here from sunny Northwest Tasmania. Hey, Brett, how you doing? Uh, Tara Johnson, or Tara as we say here, us, um, us uh, what do they call us here? Not Antipodeans, what do they call us? I have who, no idea, Antipodeans. Antipodeans. No, what do they call us uh, uh, who live on the other side of the planet? Um, I think it is Antipodeans. I'm going to have yeah. to look that up now. Um, uh, if uh, Antipodeans, here we go, a little sidebar here. Antipodeans, we are the shaping... Youth travel experts. Yeah, Antipodeans, in vernacular, British English and Irish English, the Antipodes is sometimes used to refer to Australia and New Zealand. Mm. So the British refer to us as Antipodeans. Troy Antipodean. Fun word, isn't it? Okay. Um, so anyway, uh, us Antipodeans say Tara Johnson, but she has educated me. Uh, Tara is, is one of our... Pr uh, our prized VIP uh, clients in the Mavericks Club, and she constantly corrects me and says, it's Tara. So Tara, <laughs> hey, sup dudes, how you doing? Josh Osler says, welcome back, Troy. Thanks, Josh, good to be here. Ray says, Cash hashtag keto. And Colin, uh, Colleen says, hi everyone from Maryland. There you go, thanks for checking in on Facebook. Okay, as you were. Well, I was gonna pass over this one to oh. you because I don't know enough about GDPR. Oh, and GDPR. Uh, I believe we had a bit of a webinar oh, recently about man, that. Oh man, GDPR is doing my freaking head in. Yeah. Um, so we're, we are still consulting with our lawyer to basically get the GDPR compliance stuff sorted in our business. Um, really, uh, the, the, the one of the key takeaways is that there, there are two key takeaways that we need to change in our business from a tactical point of view. One is that when somebody signs up for a free download, you then don't automatically have permi permission to add them to an autoresponder sequence of emails. So we, t and which is very unfortunate because it's kind of how we've built our business. So if I say, here's a free proposal template that will help you get paid more for your website projects, go download it, then what we normally do is just add you to a follow-up sequence that says, hey, hope you enjoyed that. Here's this, go check out the podcast. Uh, go check us out on YouTube. Have you got any questions? We'd really love to help. Now come buy my shit. That's basically the way it works, right? Well, you're not allowed to do that anymore. You have to have in the form where people say, yes, I'd like to download the proposal template. You have to have another option where they actually tick a box that says, yes, please add me to your email list and keep me up to date with regular emails. That's gonna do two things. It's going to reduce your conversion rates and it's going to reduce the number of people who actually opt in for your thing. However, I think, we all think here, and maybe we're just trying to convince ourselves, it's actually going to increase the quality of the leads in your email list. Mm -hmm. So your open rates should go up, your click rate should go up, your bounce rate should come down. Ultimately, that's a good thing. One of the other things that you need to implement is the right to be forgotten. So a, any of our email subscribers, 84,500 email subscribers we have in Infusionsoft now, can email us and say, I would like you to forget me. In other words, I would like you to remove me from all of your databases. So, so, but basically what that means is that we have to make sure that they're not stored in any of our WordPress website databases, they're not stored in Infusionsoft, 
They're not stored in convert flow, which is a tool that we use for uh, capturing leads and then um, doing on-site retargeting. They're not stored in our Facebook remarketing audience. There are all these touch points that we need to make sure that they're removed from. Now, because we don't store a lot of, so that's, that's sort of the second main point. The ramifications of that are, and again, I'm not a lawyer and I'm not European and I don't really know what I'm talking about, so I take this with a pinch <laughs> of salt. But basically, one of the ramifications of that is, we don't store a lot of data. Most of our data is stored with third-party companies like Infusionsoft, ConvertFlow, you know, Sumo, whatever. Um, we need to have what's called a DPA, um, uh, which is a digital protection agreement signed, uh, or a digital protection authority, I can't remember what it's called, with those um, companies. Now, Infusionsoft automatically did that for us. I logged into Infusionsoft and they said, hey, you've got to sign this DPA. And what that basically means is that they are taking responsibility for the integrity of that data. So if someone emails us and says, remove me from your email list, I then remove them from Infusionsoft. I, we, we have basically said, hey, we don't store the data. It's up to Infusionsoft now to make sure that you're gone. And we've signed a DPA form with Infusionsoft. Again, I don't know what I'm talking about because I'm not a lawyer, so I may have this completely tits up. Do your own research. But you basically need to have DPAs signed. Go into Google Tag Manager mm -hmm. and have a look at all of those lovely little tags that you've got installed on your website for tracking purposes. Hotjar, Google Analytics, um, you know, Sumo Me, Active Campaign, all those little Facebook pixels, all those ways that you're tracking people. You need to make sure you've got DPAs signed with all of those companies to uh, you know protect yourself. So if you work with clients, yeah. is that something you educate your clients on and just say, uh, this is what you uh, need you to know, do, I, or this is the ramifications and you need yeah. to speak to a lawyer? Correct. That's exactly what I would yeah. be saying. I would be saying, um, you know, I'm not a lawyer, I don't know what I'm talking about, but there is this thing called the GDPR. I'm just letting you know you can't ignore it yeah. because the fines are ridiculous, like two and a half million dollars mm, in fines and around. jail time. Right. Right? If you if you don't comply. So now the test case will be when somebody makes a complaint and says, hey, I requested to be forgotten here and this dickhead's still spamming me. Will the European uh, legislature come after those people and will they prosecute? It's going to be interesting to see how it rolls out because it's going to be very hard to police. I think there are going to be lots and lots and lots of infringements on GDPR because people are still trying to figure out what yeah. it actually means. So there are going to be some test cases that will, uh, that will put the legislation to the test. But consulting with clients, I would say, I'm not a lawyer, but if any of your traffic to your website is coming from Europe, you need to be across GDPR. You need to speak to your lawyer about it. Don't come complaining to me if you get fined because your opt-in form wasn't compliant. I'm a web developer and a business consultant. I'm not a lawyer. Yeah. Still, don't ignore it, I think is the real takeaway there. And there's a pretty good article from, uh, from Kinsta about it and how it relates to, to WordPress users. Uh, and WordPress itself is actually building GDPR compliance into um, into the WordPress system. But yeah, it seems like seems like lawyers mm. is the way to go. Got to bring in the big guns for this yeah. one. Lawyers are going to make a lot of money out of mm. GDPR. Nice. Maybe that's just something they invented. They're like, I don't think we're making enough money. Maybe I we think it is. I think an it's acronym. The, the way that Hallmark oh, invented. Hello. We going up or down? Well, did Who we just knows? go down? I don't know. It looked like it went from did four just, to zero. We just went up, did we? Up. Right. Hooray! Somebody, holy shit! Did you? That, People so, are loving the GDPR. So, I, so, I, so, so I, we didn't know what that noise was. <laughs> like, what the hell is that noise? So, I bought this when I was on holidays in New Zealand. I think, or just before I went to New Zealand, I bought this and I sent it to Ray as a surprise. <laughs> And I'd forgotten about it. I thought the set was falling down then when we heard that noise. Check it out. Live counter. Live um, Facebook counter. In fact, I'm just going to move that and I'm going to bring it into the set, <laughs> right? And I want people to like the page so that we can see it go up. Like us on Facebook so that you can see Troy's it go toys. up. Whoa, I can't. It's plugged in. There we go. Okay. Bummer. Don't. Quick distraction oh, there. Here's me. I Where's the was, wireless one? We're going to have to get the upgrade. I thought it was battery <laughs> operated and it's not battery operated. So anyway, like us on Facebook and we'll shit ourselves again when that thing starts <laughs> ratcheting, making noise in the background and, yep. and going up. There we go. All right. Okay. So that's what's new in WordPress at the moment. Back to the script. Yeah. So yeah, as I was going through my, my work week, there were a couple of things that I found pretty difficult and there was a couple of things that started to annoy me. Oh, go on. Tell me what pisses you off, Simon. This pisses me off. So I hate to bag something out when it's free, but I'm going to. And the Facebook plugin for WooCommerce just it just it just doesn't work. 
it really pisses me off. So I was using the, and it's recommended by Facebook, and it's like recommended by WooCommerce. We're going up or down? Uh, oh, we're down one. Brutal. Damn. Brutal. That really pisses me off. How do we go down? <laughs> How so do we go down? Aren't you people paying attention? You're supposed <laughs> to like the page and make it go up, not not unlike us and make it go down. Oh, you know what happened? Somebody who is one of the developers on the. Hey, look at that. And we oh, just we're went back. Up. Makes a lot of noise to go up one, doesn't Ray's it? I reckon someone who, who, who is a developer of the Facebook plugin for WooCommerce has just unliked us yeah, because. Yeah. Well, at yeah, least they're watching. That's fine. I'm cool go. with that. Right. So, you know, like it, the idea is that it syncs your products from, from WooCommerce over to Facebook in the product catalog and you can start running your ads. Uh, so, you, you, there's a little show hide tick box so you can stop things going over if they're not meant to go over because you might have some wholesale products that are in there that you don't want to be public and that just doesn't work basically. Uh, and you can't select specific categories to go over as opposed to your entire store. So it's got a long way to go before this is useful. Whereas using another tool like Shopify is, um, it's much easier. So Ooh, you know, controversial. Yeah. Using another tool like Shopify. Yep. It's got a long way to go before it's useful. Yep. And so it's just, it really pissed me off this week because I was trying to get some things done, just trying yeah. to get the ads over, comparing the two systems, and it just, it just, it's not cutting it. So it's a free tool, but it's, you know, useless. It'd be better if I'd pay for it. I reckon, uh, I'll tell you a story in a minute, which um, is a nice little dovetail of that, but I reckon we should have a new segment on the show <laughs> called Pause and Watch the Count. What? Did that just go down 10? We just lost 10. <laughs> Holy shit. Ten people are really pissed off now because we've we been bagging out a free plugin. Can we unplug that and just wind it up? Probably, ourselves? like Ferris Bueller's Day Off. <laughs> yeah, you know, where he puts it on the. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, Brian Hockstein says, "I wanted to see it work, so I unliked and then liked it again." Oh, thanks. There you go. Thanks for playing with our emotions, Brian. Was it Brian? <coughs> yeah. Excellent. We've we've now gone down. We're back down to uh, eleven thousand four hundred and sixty nine. Um, <coughs> we might have to mute that thing. Interestingly, I know we will. But <laughs> interestingly, when I bought that, we only had like 10,000 likes. So oh, we're still we on a nice curve. Um, I think we should have a new segment on the show called It's Got a Long Way to Go Before It's Useful. Mm. Hey, that's a good segment, isn't it? Not quite there. Uh, and I reckon, <laughs> we can, I reckon we could do that for, for staff. <laughs> yeah. He's got a 100%. long way to go before he's useful. Yeah, it's nice good, isn't time. it? Yeah. Um, now, let me just uh, dovetail this whole thing about it being free but not working. We used to, I used to play in a band years ago, true story, and um, we had an audio engineer who used to volunteer his time. He was an amazing audio engineer. The problem was, he, and he used to volunteer because that's what he wanted to do. The problem was, he always turned up late. And so instead of turning up to do the sound check and then give us plenty of time to sort of get our head around what was happening, he would turn up like 10 minutes before the show, <laughs> quick and like the crowd, like the pub's full, quickly do a sound check and then, and so in a band meeting, I said once to our band manager, you know, we really got to get this guy turning up earlier to help us do sound check. And she said, well, you know, it's a bit hard because he volunteers and he does it for free. And I said, I'd rather pay him to have him turn up on time, even though we couldn't afford to pay him because we're an original band playing original music in pubs in Australia where we don't have a huge population. And frankly, we were a little bit mediocre, so we weren't getting <laughs> paid a lot. So we couldn't afford to pay him. But the point is, there's no point doing it for free if it's shit mm. or if it's late or yeah. if it doesn't work. Yeah, you had so, some social media graphics done recently oh. that was a... We did. We had some social media graphics, amazing, and I we'll should say a big shout out to Mari Connor, who runs our Facebook ads, and they do an amazing job. However, they did start posting to our Instagram for us for free, and they just unfortunately missed the mark in terms of our branding and, and what it is that we wanted to produce physically. Mm. So if you're doing work yes. for clients and you want to do it pro bono, you want to do some free work, you, you really have to make that your chance to like over deliver as opposed to go, well, you know, it's free, so what do you expect? Yeah. Like that's yeah. not, a good, that's not right. a good strategy. Yeah. So there you go. Plugins, services, products, everything. If it, it, make it good. Yeah. Is the lesson there. Cool, cool. All right. Um, hey, we've got some questions from the Facebook group, so let's help some people get unstuck. Let's get unstuck. So this question comes from Clifford Almedia in our, in our private Facebook group uh, about the discovery workshop. Mm. Uh, Clifford says, how do you pitch discovery? Uh, do you send an agreement over for discovery? What do you deliver with discovery? How do you price discovery? Should you do a free pay? 
free or paid discovery and why? And he also says he's happy to put in his two cents about it. Oh, <laughs> so excellent. asking the question, but he probably has a lot of these answers. This one got the most love in the group, so we're gonna um, we're gonna dive into this. So kind of rapid fire questions because we've we're you know over halfway through the show at the moment. So I'm gonna I'm gonna fire them to you quick. Go All on. right. You got just first thing that comes here. Sure. How do you pitch discovery? Well, it's a difficult question to rapid fire <laughs> and answer. Um, you, okay, you basically pitch discovery by saying, I'm going to save you lots of money and months of wasted time and effort by, by going through a discovery process with you. Yeah. Do you send an agreement over for discovery? Sure. Yeah, 100%. Like, I, I would put it as a proposal. Totally. Yeah. So you can yep. package that up. That's discovery. This is what's in. This is what's out. Yep. What do you deliver specifically? We do. There we go! Yeah, somebody's liking it. We deliver a discovery workbook, which... Um, oh, back down again. This damn, what's going on? Ray's messing with emotions. us. Uh, we're going to deliver... We deliver a discovery workbook. Yeah, That's which what we deliver, which we'll show you, show you yeah. in a moment. And then how do you price out discovery? So I typically price out discovery based on what I think the project is going to... So, for example, if I'm working on an e-commerce project, which I don't do anymore because I hate e-commerce, because the Facebook plugin doesn't work. Um, <laughs> if I'm uh, pitching a project that I think is going to be about 20 grand, I'll pitch discovery at somewhere between 10 and 20% of the f final project, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? You don't want to pitch it at like, well, I'm only 50 bucks an hour, it's going to take four hours, so it's $200. You don't That's want right. to pitch it that. It's more valuable than that. So if I think the project is going to be 20 grand, I'll pitch discovery at somewhere between two and four. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Yep. Cool. Next question. Uh, and should you do free or pay discovery? And why? See, answer above. You shouldn't do free discovery because they don't value it if it's free. Mm -hmm. And also you've got to get paid for your time. And part of the discovery process is that you can actually scope out how you're going to build this project, what kind of um, theme framework we're going to use, which plugins we need, which custom functions we need to write, which third party tools we need to integrate with API, all that kind of stuff that you can scope out and get paid to scope that out while you're going through the discovery process. Yeah, this is the perfect first thing to sell to a client. A lot of the times you pitch projects, you're not really sure what to do, you've got your proposal together, you're not exactly sure what's in and what's out, and maybe your client isn't either. So this is the perfect thing to pitch to them, to get paid, to get your foot in the door, and to be able to scope out the project properly, to then give a proposal. So we're gonna get into some more details in a sec, but yeah, there you go, Clifford. It's called a wedge product, right? When I used to, I used to be a door-to-door -door sales rep, did you? Yeah, yeah. No oh, way. Oh, open the closet wow. and just have another skeleton fall out. Yeah, yeah. I used to sell <laughs> hair care products to hairdressing salons. You're joking. So I used to drive around the countryside and I would call on hairdressing salons and I'd walk in and say, oh, g'day, I'm Troy and I've got some shampoo in the back seat. You, you want to buy some? Flick your hair around. Flick my hair around. Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> And uh, had my eyebrows tinted once. I had my eyebrows and my eyelashes tinted once in a hair salon in Fitzroy in Melbourne. Wow. Yep. Um, so, um, the point was that you, the, the, what we, how you, we were trained was that you've got to get your foot in the door. So you've got to be able to wedge your foot in the door with something that gives you a reason to then go back next month and follow up, right? So a discovery session is a way to wedge your foot in the door, open the account, over deliver, get them to give you some money based on a promise and then over deliver on that promise and go, they go, wow, you're pretty good. You know what you're doing, you've got your shit together. Imagine if we paid you to build out the whole project. Mm. That's the whole point of a discovery um, uh, session, and mm. that's why you should sell them. Yep. Yeah. Hundred percent. Great. Okay. It sounds like we're um, we're digging into something important here. So we are. let's uh, let's take a look at the gold nugget for this week. Time to dig into the gold nugget. As you might have guessed, the gold nugget is discovery workshop. So just you know, coming back a little bit, uh, you know why. Is it important? Hopefully, they, hopefully that's becoming a bit more evident at the moment. Like discovery workshop is when the client is not clear on exactly what it is that they're wanting to do, which can happen a lot. They don't really know what it is that they're <laughs> going to do. They probably haven't done a project like this before, so how would they know what they want? If they're calling the shots and they're dictating what they want, they've basically prescribed the solution to the problem and they just want you to execute on that. Yeah. But who was the expert here? The expert is you. If you're getting some sense of you, you're not really sure that they know what they want and you may not be sure on how to deliver that and that's totally fine, that's where a discovery workshop is perfect to be able to sell them something, deliver value, get paid and really scope this out more effectively. And make sure this is not going to be a nightmare project. Yeah. Most of the time the client doesn't know exactly what they want 
because they don't know what they don't know. Yeah. So they think they know what they want. They have an idea of what their objectives are and what the outcome is, but they don't really understand the process and they don't know what they don't know. And then they see something halfway. The reason scope creep happens more often than not is because they see something halfway through the build, they get excited and say, oh, can we make it pink? And then all of a sudden you're chasing you know, uh, chasing the goalpost, trying to get uh, a, hit a home run. Lots of sporting metaphors here getting mixed up. Sure. Chasing the goalpost, trying to hit a home run. <laughs> you play in a weird sport. That's right. And where Quidditch. really what you need to do is stand back and shoot the three pointer. Um, and and so if you if you scope out um, if you scope out through a discovery <laughs> workshop exactly what it is that we're going to build, and ideally as part of that discovery session, if you can get them in the browser and start to uh, get them interacting with a prototype, Ooh. Uh, then you'll have a much more meaningful conversation and you'll get to a an outcome a lot quicker because you're not talking about something that is a visual medium, you're actually interacting with it in the browser. Yeah. So that's a whole other conversation for another time. And that's when you can hit a hole in one. Correct, yeah. that's when you can hit a hole in one. <laughs> so right. we've got we've got the prototype, right? Yep. So that, that's important. And we've also got like a quality brief. Like mm -hmm. I think that's really important. So mm -hmm. you want to be able to list out all the different features. Mm -hmm. So this would be something we'd include in discovery. So he, here's, the, here's the dirty little secret, right? The way that you get paid more as a web developer or a WordPress consultant is to stop selling websites and stop talking about WordPress. And this is not new to us. We've been saying this for, I don't know, I've been saying this for eight years now. Um, the way to get paid more is to actually become a business consultant. And the number one way to, to become a business consultant is to, to go through a discovery process with your client and start asking more meaningful questions that are a little bit awkward. And a lot of small business owners haven't thought about this stuff, right? So your job is to is to help them go through this process and be okay in the awkward silences or the uncomfortability. Um, we just went through this process this morning with Josh from Work The System. We oh, hired right. Josh from Work The System to come into the, the business here and help us with our systems. And we went through a process this morning where we are explaining to Josh why we're here, what it is we do, how we do it, and who we do it for. Uh, and we're very clear about that because we've done the work, but most small businesses just haven't done the work. And your job in the discovery workbook, you'll see, your job is to figure, is to help them figure out why we're doing this in the first place, what it is we're trying to achieve, who we help, how we help them, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And if you can start having that conversation with them, they will see you as someone who is far more valuable than just someone who builds websites or does some digital marketing. Exactly, because the, the tendency that, that we've definitely seen with, uh, with WordPress website builders and consultants is that they go straight into the how-to. So client wants a website, clients, client wants e-commerce, they may want some complicated features, and we jump straight into how do I deliver those features? What specifically do they want? As opposed to why are we doing this in the first place? What is it that your business is, what, what do they do? And who is your target audience? So we can make the result an actual success. Because the how-to stuff, let's assume that you can do that. Let's just say, whatever needs to be done, you can figure out a way to get that done. But why and what is the purpose of this and what does success actually look like? That's some much more important questions that also what other web agencies won't ask unless they're watching this episode. Uh, James Murgatroyd here has got a couple of comments on Facebook. Things that piss him off. No SVG upload support in WordPress core. 100%. Yeah. I'm with you, James. And uh, oh. he says quality trumps quantity. Sure. Does that piss okay. him off? Thanks, Joe. Yeah. Oh, no, the red light's a, going. That's just a comment. He said quality <coughs> trumps quantities. So, yeah, uh, yeah, absolutely. With the free versus yeah. paid stuff. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah right. Totally. There you go. 100% yeah. agree. Yeah. So if uh, if screen sharing is working, we do have a we do have a workbook to help you along with this. Is but, this you the, know, is this the, is this the tool of the wing thing or not? No, no, we're not quite yeah. there. Yeah, it I is. I haven't got the order quite. So it is, but we well, can just talk about it. Okay. And then we'll say that's what it is. Okay. Was there another tool of the wing that we're gonna? No, this is the tour. Well, then cool. we should do the bumper. Oh, I right, think. Cool. Yeah. And then we'll talk about Well, okay. Well, I'll tell you what. In order to deliver a, I think, just a quick little team meeting there. In order to deliver a, a great discovery um, workshop session to your client, we've put together a discovery workbook for you that we're going to give away. And that will be this week's Tool of the Week. Get ready for Tool of the Week. 
think that flow works. I think that it flow works. works. Yeah, the yeah. little team meeting. So you have a little bit thing. of a why and then a what yeah. and then And then the how is the tool of the week cool. thing. Yeah. We could spend a bit more time on that. Yeah. Alright, cool. So cool. Awesome. yeah, quick break and we're back. Uh, so what we've got here is uh, this week's tool of the week, which is an online marketing strategy workshop, also called a discovery workbook. You can call it whatever you like. Uh, and the, the whole purpose of this is th it's just a really easy way to run through with the client why they're in business because getting clear on why they do what they do is really important and it's something that a lot of clients, a lot of businesses don't actually do. So actually getting on the same page, not just with you and the client, but with the client and their team is actually a really important exercise. So uh, also the next part is to go into the what. So what products and services does this particular business um, bring to market in order to achieve that why. Mm. So this is helping you know what are their, their flagship products, like what gets the best sales, what are they actually pushing. Mm. Could have a thousand products, but mm. there's only four that really matter, mm. right? So you're gonna get clear on that by going through this workshop with the client. Uh, also who, who stands to benefit the most. I really love the, the formula here by John Jansch from um, mm. Duct Tape Marketing. So uh, bring your who to life. Their physical description, what they want, the biggest problem, how they buy, the best way to communicate with them. Mm. And that is basically your, your ideal customer avatar yep. persona. Yep. Straight out of duct tape marketing. Mm. Yeah, it's beautiful for our good friend John Jantz. So, so, so just let's just draw a little, a little um, dotted line there, right? So the first part of this workshop, you could run this, I've run this over a full day before, mm. I've run it over a half day. I don't want to do it any, any quicker than four hours. But if you say you're doing a four hour workshop, the first hour and a half, really that first 90 minute session is the why, the what, and the who. Yeah, which we've just talked about. Right. Yeah, so why are we here? Why do you come to work every day apart from making money? Making money is not allowed to be part of that conversation. That's a given, we're in business. What is it that we're doing to, to, to bring that why to light? And who do we help the most? So who buys the products and services that are the what in, the, in order for us to achieve the why? That's like a 90 minute session. Yeah? Yeah. Take a break, have a coffee, do whatever you need to do, and then move into the next part of the session. Yeah. So yeah, this is something that you can, you basically sell as a product, as a workshop to your clients. I've delivered this online as well. Yep. Um, when it's online, uh, getting it done in two hours is really hard, but mm. doing it longer than two hours online, it starts to get a little confusing. Yep. So I try to get it done in two hours, but mm. it's, it's hard to stay together. But in person, a half day for sure. Yep. Like it's just, yeah, there's a lot of brainstorming, there's a lot of communication going on, there's a lot of, um, a lot of questions and um, answers going on here. And this, is, this may be something completely different for a lot of people, but it's actually quite easy to deliver because you're just facilitating this. That's right. You're just facilitating the discussion That's with right. your client and potentially some of their staff. Yeah. And it, what they're gonna walk away with is this workbook and also just a, a great sense of really understanding what the hell they do for the you, first time yep. sometimes. You, the, 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 key, the key to doing this is that you've just gotta be really comfortable in awkward silences. Mm. That's If you can get really comfortable in awkward silences, I mean, that's just really a life hack. Yeah, it's a good one. Really, if you, if you, the more comfortable you can get in awkward silences, the better off your life will be. I'm feeling pretty good after that. Mm. So, could have gone way longer. Could have. <coughs> yeah. Easily. So, uh, it's, it's about just stepping back from being the one that has to give the answers for a sec, mm -hmm. right? Like as yeah. the consultant, as the one who is the knowledge worker, and just for a sec, you're the one just facilitating some great discussion and answers somewhere else. Yeah. That, that's a big step towards becoming a consultant. Yeah, because the, 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 the tendency is just to talk mm -hmm. lots in the workshop. You could do this and, and you could do that and come we'll up do with, this. Yeah, answers yeah. and solutions. That's yeah. no, 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 that's no. not the job of the workshop. The job of the workshop is just to let the people do the exploration and discover what it is they're doing, why and who they do it for. Mm -hmm. So then we move into the next part of the session, which is? The goals. So what is it that they actually want to achieve? Now, goals are different things for a lot of people. A very easy framework is a SMART goal, which is specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time bound. Not something like we want you know, more money. This needs to work. We want more traffic. Mm. Like it's not, it's not enough. They're not SMART goals. No. They're they are goals. yeah they are, they're dumb goals. I mean they I mean you know the, the you know the classic thing is oh well we need more customers. Okay, if I get you one more customer, is that a success? Mm. 
And what if that customer is not profitable? What mm. if that customer actually drains the life out of your whole team and sucks the profit out of the company and affects your ability to deliver services to your most profitable customers? Is that customer useful? No, okay. So that's not a smart goal. Let's actually have a think about how many customers do you want? What do they look like? You know, we want 15 new small to medium enterprise manufacturing clients in the next six months who spend on average $12,000 a year on our services. Boom. Mm. That's I, a smart I goal. guarantee you that exercise in itself is, it 100%. will move you along so far, even for your own business. Yeah. If you were to focus on something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Like we, we had a post in, um, in the, the private Facebook group, someone talking about that they're just not building an agency fast enough. Mm. And it was like, well, what does an agency look like to you? Yeah. What, like how quick is what you want? Yeah. Um, what, what is success? Like what specifically do you want that to look like and yeah. why, you know, why isn't it happening? Why is everyone in such a rush yeah. is my question. Like there are many levers you can pull, quick sidebar here, there are many levers you can pull, um, oh nice work Max, there are many levers you can pull um, to, to make your business more successful, right? I mean, you could spend the next three months building yourself out of the business, writing documentation and training people to run the business so that you can not be stressed out, that's successful. Um, you can generate more customers, you can generate more profit from your existing customers. Seth Godin, when he was on the podcast, said, what if you had to triple your revenue in the next 12 months, but you weren't allowed to take on one new client? How would your business change as a result of that exercise? What's the rush, is my question. Why is everyone in such a rush to crush it? Mm -hmm. What are you going to do then? Mm. It's almost Once like a cultural it, what are you thing, do? isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Just got to keep hustling, keep hustling, push, 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 don't sleep. No, no, no. Well, why are you doing all of this for? Like, what is this going to do for you? By, right. you know, not sleeping and pushing and pushing and doing, you're totally yeah. stressed out. What for? Yeah, what for? What why? For? Not even why. Why looks into the past? What for looks into the future? So Ooh, make that change. I like it a lot. Mm. I why like why it a ask lot. excuses? What's the reason? that you can tell yourself that you haven't got there. Mm. What for is like what needs to happen in order for you to get there so you look forward. Wow. Yeah. Good distinction. I like yeah. it a lot. So back to the back to the workbook. Now yep. we're getting into we're getting into a bit of a marketing strategy now. And make no mistake, if you build websites for clients, you are in the marketing business. You may be someone who can code, you may be someone who designs, but you are in marketing. Mm. That's what a website is. It's mm. marketing. It's yeah. The, the a potential voice of, well, a yep. part of the voice of your customers. Even if you are building an intranet to improve the productivity and the communication within a team and you're not attracting clients at all, if that's your sweet spot, it is still a marketing exercise because you are improving efficiencies within the team and you still that still falls into the marketing category in some way, shape or form. You need to sell it, you need to get buy-in from the people, you need to manage the change in that organisation. They're all marketing exercises. So don't be confused, if you are building technology that is based around communication, to improve communication and facilitate communication, then you need to understand marketing. Exactly. And this workbook is perfect for that if you're just getting started with it. Right. Uh, or if you're an expert as well, it's awesome. Are we sharing the screen? Uh, I don't know. What I assume we have not. Oh, you oh, still are. Cool. That. I just, I didn't want to mention it Far because I assumed out. that it wasn't working. I tell you what, <laughs> Max is, Max is a very good learner. Next level. Very good learner and Ray is an exceptional teacher. Yeah. I mean, I'm just that I'm handover absolutely was just like a blown door away by how good Max is running these live streams. Oh, and Ray's not even five. here. I mean, Ray, you can have a Tuesday off now, because up until recently, Ray wasn't allowed to have a Tuesday off. Mm. Well, he's we just on social live. media watching this I know. and just commenting. I and know. Who's on first? Drinking says David. ketones. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Anyway, um, so once you've done the why, the what, the who, and you've set their goals, then you get into the strategy, and the first part of your strategy is to attract. We want to attract someone to be able to get into this in the first place. So, and to do that, you want to define the biggest problem or frustration the marketplace has and what you have in order to solve that. Now, there's more detail into the workbook. You can feel free to read that and understand that a bit more, uh, but we will, we will press on. And so you're specifically, we're talking about your client's customers. How do we help your client attract more customers or more leads or more staff or whatever it is they want to attract? That's right. And that's why doing the goals first before the strategy is so, so important. Because if you dive into the strategy, you don't know your why, you don't know what it is you're trying to achieve, then anything will work. Anything will get us there, right? right. Like you have, to, you have to know your why and, your, yeah. and what success looks like. Yeah. So you've attracted them, yep. all right? So once they're there at the website, what, yeah. what do we do next? Yeah. Well, you've got to, have a, you've got to have start a conversation with them. And the way you do that is you very GDPR <laughs> compliantly, you capture their information. Mm. So you capture their email address or their phone number or their dress size or their birth date or whatever information is important to you. 
I'm only half joking about dress size, by mm -hmm. the way. I'm having a suit fitting this Friday afternoon. First time I'm ever actually being measured up by a tailor for a tailor-made suit. First time and in my life. And they got your dress size. Well, they wanted to know my, you know, basically my dress size or my jacket size before I come in, so they kind of roughly know who I am and who's who in the zoo. Mm. Um, so whatever information that you need to capture on you, you on the website, this is where you've got the people, you've attracted the people to the thing, and now you need to start attracting, you need to start capturing their information so that you can continue a meaningful conversation. Yep. So, who are you? What are you interested in? My name is Simon Kelly. I'm interested in building a team in my agency. Great. Let's have an ongoing conversation with Simon about recurring revenue. I mean about building a team. See what I did there? So you want to find out as much as you possibly can about that specific lead so that you can capture their information and then... The next thing that we do is... to the relationship. Yeah. Exactly. An ongoing conversation. Ongoing right, conversation. This, while this is a strategy and it's got the different pieces, this is just something you would do if someone walked into a shop. We're just breaking down the different stages of the relationship and the different parts of communication. Yeah. And it's just, it's a little different online, yeah. but these are the steps that you yeah. go through. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It, when I get walked into Bunnings, and a um, very funny question from David Murren says, so let me get this right, the best way to attract more clients is to tint my eyebrows and eyelashes. Spot on. Um, Test it. The, if you it walk works. into Bunnings, which is a big hardware store here in Australia, and I'm in the fastening aisle, which I was the other day, I'm looking for fasteners, you know, glue, nails, screws, anything that can fasten something to another thing. I don't want a shop assistant walking in asking me if I want to have a conversation about... Pot plants. Pot plants. Mm. I'm in the fastening aisle. I want to have a conversation about fasteners. Mm. Right? But so this you're interested is in fastening, you'd be like, yeah, yeah I am awesome. actually. Great. How did you know? Do you, like this, amazing. Pop, do you like this pop plant? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so email marketing like basically does that. Magazines. Correct, that's right. What? Email marketing does, you're in the fastening aisle, here's a conversation about pot plants. So, so <laughs> how do you nurture that conversation and that relationship and have conversations based on the information that you've captured? The good thing is we don't need to worry about the how-to and all of those details just yet because we're right. just putting it on paper. That's right. Right? You can figure out like, oh my God, Correct. how do I do this? In fact, Who knows? In fact, the real dirty little secret for this workshop is this. The more you get into the how-to, the less successful this workshop will be. So here's the key distinction. In a strategy workshop like this, talk lots. Once you get into the strategy part of it, the attract, convert, nurture, we'll go through that. Once you get into that, start talking lots about the what they need to be doing, not the how. The how is why they're going to hire you. So you don't want to teach them how to do it in the strategy workshop. This is not an educational seminar. It's a strategy session. It's a discovery workshop. So talk about the what. Don't get into the how. Just yeah. say, oh, no worries. Leave that to us. We'll figure that out. Yeah. If they were like, oh, well, what tools would you use for your opt-ins? Don't everything? worry about it. We'll figure that out. Yeah. I don't know yet because we haven't finished. So yeah, let's finish the exercise. Th trust me, there are plenty of tools that we can use. That's not the problem. The problem is getting the strategy right on paper and us all coming together. In fact, the problem is there are too many tactics and not enough strategy. Nice. That's the yeah. problem. So that's how you get your client back on track. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. So once we've done that, we've nurtured them. Like a big problem is how do, how do we get them to, to do the thing? Like what do we want them to do? We want them to, to potentially buy something or book a consultation. Mm -hmm. What is that? Mm. And this is one. Of, this is actually one of the most difficult things to do in any small business because a lot of small businesses don't understand what is known as their conversion event. What is the thing that? What is the action that someone has to take in order to convert them from a prospect to a customer? What is the action someone needs to take? Now, if you're a large accounting firm, it might be they need to sign a letter of engagement which has all the terms and conditions and all the payment and all that, all the, all the bullshit written out on a letter and they sign that letter and they actually hire the accounting firm and they engage the accounting firm. That's a conversion event, right? If you're a mortgage broker, the conversion event might be they need to sign off and give the mortgage broker authority to go and do the thing and do the credit check and put all the bullshit together and they sign an agreement to say, yes, we're happy for you to get paid commission once you authorise the, the finance for us. If you are a web designer or a WordPress consultant, then the conversion event is you need your client to actually accept the proposal. What is the conversion event? And a lot of small business owners don't, especially service-based business owners, don't have the conversion event set up. If you're selling products, it's really easy. I'd like to buy this soy decaf uh, mocha keto, please. Soy salted mocha keto. Great, no worries, that's $3.50 plus $8 surcharge for the keto. No worries, there's $11.50, that's a conversion event. But if you're not selling physical product, 
then if you're selling services, the conversion event might not be defined. Mm. So you need to help your client define the conversion event. Yep. And then you just go from nurture, what action do we need them to take to convert? And, and you need to basically build that into the process. Yeah. 100%. And, and there's so many different things that are happening here along yeah, this process. Still, and we're back on 70 again. Uh, so many things happening trying, within this so process, but that. we can't measure all of it at once. Well, you can, but that's going to make you really confused. So you want to get on, pay, on, on paper, you want to have a chat with them. If all these things happening, what is one thing that we can measure that, it, that is really going to, to help move things forward? Mm. If we measured traffic, is that going to make a difference? Mm. If we measured how many people picked up the phone and called us, yeah. would that make a difference? Mm. If we measured the amount of people that actually converted and purchased after they called, would that be the yeah. key metric that we want? And so, so let me just touch on this for a second, right? Because this is where you can really start to elevate yourself as a consultant. <laughs> um, let's say you're an accounting firm and you are providing, and I'm using this because it's an example of a client I know. Let's say you're an accounting firm and you're providing um, financial services to your business clients. So not just accounting compliance work, but financial advice, right? Or financial health. And let's say that every time someone walks into the, your office and you have a meeting with them, that you convert at about seven out of 10. Great conversion rate. So the, you don't wanna measure your conversions because you know you're doing well there. You wanna measure, you might think, okay, well I just need more traffic. I just need more people coming to the website, booking it in a, 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 a strategy session, and you know what, I can even do this via Skype now, so let's just load up my calendar, get a bunch of Skype calls Monday to Friday, and I'll convert seven out of 10. That might be the metric that you wanna measure. But here's the thing, if you don't have the capacity in the business to serve all of those clients at the same level, then you don't want more traffic because your business is gonna fall over, your service level is going to drop, and all of a sudden you're gonna end up with unhappy clients. So maybe the thing that you wanna measure is profit per client. So we say, hey, this client is extremely profitable because we deliver this service, we charge this much, it costs us this much. But if we scale that up and end up with another 25 clients, we don't have the, the bums on seats in the back office to deliver that product or that service at that profit margin. So maybe that's the metric you wanna measure. Now you start having conversations like that with clients in a discovery workshop, oh, you're gonna blow their mind. Mm. And all of a sudden they're like, hang on, I thought you were a web designer. I thought you built WordPress websites. Yeah, we do, but it's got to fit into the overall strategy and the overall health of the business. Yeah. And now all of a sudden, I'm not charging 500 bucks for a website, kids, right? Yeah, and you've just through this workshop, you're bringing massive value to their business. You haven't even actually done anything. That's right. Yeah, well, not anything that you're used to anyway with pushing yeah. pixels and writing code. Correct. Uh, quick question on Facebook. Brett Drinkwater says, do we need to worry about GDPR if we don't service clients in Europe? Brett, I'll make this very clear. I'm not a lawyer. I don't know. I would ask your lawyer. I wouldn't imagine, but I'm not a lawyer. So ask your lawyer or ask mine. Kurt at General Standards. I'm sure he would you know, be happy to just email australia at generalstandards.co and ask Kurt. I'm sure he'd be happy to answer your questions and convert you to a client. Yeah, I was just going to say, like, what's the there conversion event mm. there? Yeah. Mm. I don't get paid an affiliate commission, by the way. Cool. All right. Um, bit, of a, bit of a big episode there, but uh, there's a lot to it when it comes to discovery, and I think it's really important. So, that, you know, like replay this, download the, the discovery workbook, and start offering these to your clients. Next week, we're going to take a look at how to actually sell discovery mm. workbooks, discovery workshops. So um, there'll possibly be some useful tools and templates. When do you actually offer this in, in the whole process? How do you go about emailing a client to try to get them to jump on board? And maybe, just maybe, the proposal template that goes with this. Mm. Wow, mm. that's a big promise. Yeah. Um, but only if you like the Facebook page. Only if, if that goes up. That's right. <laughs> if that goes up to 11,500, then we'll give you our shirt next week, all right? If that goes up to 11,500, we'll give you the shirt, which basically means we'll give you everything you need to sell uh, um, strategy sessions. It's worth more than a shirt. Actually not gonna take my shirt off. Mm, that's I don't wanna embarrass you all. Yeah. Um, <coughs> so there you go. <coughs> cool, all right. Hey, this was fun, I think it was helpful. Yeah. It always was fun. Always fun. And it was helpful. Yeah. Let Just us know what you think. Please subscribe on YouTube. Uh, hit the little bell so you're notified when, when the videos go live because mm -hmm. we've also got toots that will be coming up as well and uh, every fortnight, every yeah. week. Every fortnight we every put fortnight. out a, a how-to video that teaches you how to do something in WordPress that hopefully makes your consulting business more profitable and streamlined and more efficient. So uh, check us out on YouTube there. And remember, uh, of course, like us on Facebook and share this with your grandma. 
she might find it entertaining as she's having a cup of tea in the morning or the afternoon. Mm -hmm. With a little bit of brandy in it. A little bit of brandy, why not? Yeah, why Absolutely, not? nothing wrong with that. That's right. Helps Oscar go to sleep at night. <laughs> 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 Um, all right. Hey, uh, thanks for being a part of it. Uh, we'll look forward to seeing you again next week. Until then, remember, knowledge is power. And silence is golden. <laughs>